Hi guys, Malban here, and uh, again I want to talk about Pytrex. I know to the onlooker it might not seem that there has much, much changed, but internally quite a lot hadn't. So I'm going to do another video to show the same as last time more or less and uh, talk about what wonderful things I did. Um, I already did a couple of blog entries regarding the stuff I'm going to talk about, so there's nothing really new here, but I'm fascinated that it all works what I, what I did, and I'm just gonna talk about it and be fascinated about what I did myself. <laughs> Sorry if this is somewhat self-congratulating. Um, thing is, I was going to uh, do something that made the whole emulation and uh, output of uh, on the Vectrex more performant, and I really did. The uh, thing is, before everything on the Pytrex was sequential, uh, so they are in one round, in one display round, about 10 to 20 percent was done emulating for example asteroids or, or some other game and uh, the other 90 or 80 percent was uh, time that the vectrex could actually draw on screen so there were potentially 10 to 20 percent of time where the vectrex did not draw anything on, on the screen and uh, that is time uh, well wasted the uh, Pi Zero is such a performance machine, at least compared to a Vectex, um, that it should be possible to be much faster overall. So what I thought I would do is to draw the vectors and while drawing the vectors already compute on whatever else the Pytrex might do. See the, the along the cycle difference one vectrex cycle is uh, over 600 times slower than the um, than the pi tracks than the uh, um, pi zero so even if there's only a short line drawn in a couple of cycles say in 10 cycles or so that would be I, I don't know, thousands of instructions or at least cycles that uh, uh, Pi Zero could do. And yeah, actually that is ex exactly what I did. In between every vector now and every positioning and sometimes even bet between different phases of vectors, I can now run the Pi Zero. So that actually the emulation or the application or whatever you want to call it that's running on the actual uh, pi tracks uh, on on the <laughs> on the pi zero is uh, interleaved with with the actual drawing on the vectrex and um, that was quite a complicated programming because i used interrupts timing interrupts there's these uh, vectors on the vectrex screen must be drawn very precise and if you get the timing wrong then there's wobbling or there are some uh, vectors more stretched than others and you see it immediately so the timing had to be 100 percent correct and uh, yeah well this is what you see now i i know you've seen this intro but uh, one very nice effect of the new uh, programming mode, uh, the, the library I wrote to output on the Vectrex uh, does now have a new mode, I call it IRQ mode and within this mode, or if, if you uh, program with this mode then the actual output to the Vectrex, uh, to the Vectrex, oh my god, and to, to the Vectrex can have a different speed uh, than the actual program running. Right now, what you see here is the uh, the Pytrex or the the uh, 
uh, pi zero is in sync with the vectrex. So if one vectrex cycle is uh, uh, drawn on screen or is, is processed, uh, or one vectrex round is processed, one program round, so to say, is also progressed, uh, 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 processed. And uh, right now this is displaying in 50 hertz. And 50 hertz is always a clean display and I've done some more experiments uh, the last couple of days and it is just that there is no other frequency, at, at least here in Germany, I don't know if it, if it has to do with the frequency of the overall uh, currency, uh, I, I don't know, current, uh, not currency, um, but anyway, every other hertz refresh rate then 50 wobbles or uh, shakes a little bit uh, oh well there is one other frequency 25 hertz I exactly half the uh, or double the time of 50 hertz that doesn't wobble either but it's it's hard on the eyes so what you here see here now is actually uh, the pi synchronized with the vectrex to, to show you uh, an example I'm going to uh, uh, increase the refresh rate of the program running. Right now it's both the program running and the Vectrex is uh, uh, doing its its game round or uh, however you want to call it in uh, 50 Hertz. Uh, via console I can uh, speed that up. Right now the Pytrax is refreshing four times as fast as the Vectrex. So uh, it's refreshing in 200 hertz, but the Vectrex is still re uh, uh, refreshing in 50 hertz. Um, I don't know how fast I can go uh, with this uh, demo. It's, it probably can go uh, quite fast. This is uh, again, I think this will be uh, the fastest uh, I can go. Uh, uh, it, it's still a little bit faster. It's about uh, five times as fast. So here you can see how fast, in comparison to the Vectrex, the, the, the Pytrex really is. Um, any, oh, yeah, I, I, um, some of the output is also a little bit faster. So this is 50 hertz again. It might even be more impressive if I show you on an emulator. I'm going into, for example, Battlezone. Now Battlezone, the original machine uh, refreshes in I think 42 Hertz or something like that. Uh, the screen refresh rate is 50 Hertz here. I, 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 pro I, I And I configured it that the refresh rate of nearly all emulators is 50 Hertz regardless of the, uh, what the emulator is doing. So this is uh, the, the Battlezone machine is refreshing in 42 Hertz or the, the emulation and the Vectrex is in 50 Hertz. I'm going to do the same I did for the Pytrex, uh, for the, the intro thing now. I'm going to increase the speed of battle zone. And here you can see, so to say, the power actually of the, uh, of the Pi Zero. It's really speedy now. Uh, it's, oh, how much is it? It's about three times as fast as before. It's, it's nearly an action game, so to say. And the wonderful thing is it is still displaying in 50 hertz uh, i'm well <laughs> i don't know if you uh, you, you will uh, notice it i'm uh, fascinated by it I, i'm i'm thrilled so to say um this what's also i, I can show you an, an, another example I, I don't know if you see it on video but if you go to the um asteroids emulator uh High score saving for the uh, emulator is uh, supported now for asteroids. Um, yeah, uh, this is a high score I did uh, some time ago. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit and uh, show you the game over sequence. Uh, so I'm going to die soon. Uh, by the way, uh, I don't think many people actually have played <laughs> <laughs> this asteroid or at least they have not complained because the hyper jump feature was not working at all um, there were no keys defined for it to fire so uh, 
Well, well, I, I did that now. I have a hyper jump. That is a very good opportunity to die because every so often, I don't know, every five or six jumps, one dies from the hyper jump. And sometimes it just uh, takes forever for an asteroid to hit you, at least if you want to. Um, so, one last dive. Come on. Ah, nearly got it. Game over. Now, uh, oh, I did not do a high score. It, I should do at least thousand points. Okay. Uh, anyway, what I was going to show you, uh, I, we will reach there sooner or later. Um, I wanted to show you the the, um, the message that appears when you have the game over sequence. There's this message that you played really fantastically and that you know, can now enter uh, your high score and so on and so on. And this message used to wobble like hell because uh, there were just too many vectors drawn on the screen. Um, and I thought the Vectrex uh, could not do that. Anyway, this is the text I'm talking about. It is absolutely crystal clear. It is not shaking. It's displaying in 50 hertz. And actually, there are about 5,000 Vectrex cycles left. So uh, I could probably also display another line of text. And I think this is really impressive uh, uh, at least i think so um and uh, a funny story while implementing the, the whole implementation was not on the onset uh, all the time bug free what i did with the irq mode um i implemented it in my pipeline code so that all vectors were drawn uh, with a special feature uh, uh, which uses uh, what I described before, the, the timer interrupt to uh, call, so to say, uh, uh, the, the bare metal library to use uh, for the emulator. Um, yes, and I had everything done, everything finished, and on Gravita, Gravita was always my test subject. We can load Gravita so we can see something else. Um, and on Gravita, there is a. Where am I? There is a uh, screen, more or less, in the beginning. Um, come on. Uh, I'm not going to do anything. Where all these planets and ships are circling and uh, you s start off from. And this was always my test screen. And um, I was glad to display that, m more or less, uh, quite a lot better than before. Before it took, uh, I, I don't know, I could display it only in 40 hertz or something like that. And uh, then I could display it with a IRQ uh, thing within 45 hertz. So uh, it was quite a lot better. And uh, after, I think, two days filling some more with it, not uh, correcting, but uh, beautifying it, uh, so the IRQ mode, uh, I realized that the thing that I really wanted to do right from the onset, I didn't really do yet. So all movement vectors and all in-line drawings, so to say, was not done yet. So uh, the, the large timers within vector drawing uh, did not support the whole IRQ mode. I, I just forgot to, to put it in there. And already Gravita was, uh, I think, 10 15 percent faster and uh, i was absolutely astonished after then implementing the rest now this screen uh, you saw uh, with this one here um if you configure it right uh, then there is no wobble at all you can display it in in 50 hertz this special vectrex here is my cranky vectrex and i have to input some special weight cycles so the vectors are all displayed okay but uh, the, the chances are really good that you do not have a cranky backtracks and then you can see that in yeah well in 50 Hertz uh, probably the whole game um, 
There's uh, one thing, this Gravitar, for example, is actually now playing in 60 hertz, or I think 62 hertz. Uh, this is the original game speed, but the display speed is, as I told you before, 50 hertz. So this is another great thing. You can play all the games in the correct speed, but still have a flicker-free, um, well, Vectrex display. A at least this goes only so far as the Vectrex display the vectors at all in, 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 the, in the time. There's uh, one game in particular where this does not really work out, and this is Tempest. Uh, Tempest looks oh, much, much better than before, in my opinion. Uh, the, the vectors nearly uh, all match uh, all locations and it's fast. Uh, Tempest is also a game which plays in 50 and 60 hertz and it does really play in 60 hertz. But uh, for this game, I actually switched the uh, Vectrex frequency output frequency to 40 hertz, not to 50 hertz. So it is flickering a little bit. Uh, but this makes it possible to actually play the game uh, in the correct speed nearly all, of th all the time, I think. And uh, these 40 hertz are actually, well, they are flickery, but they are still okay, in my opinion. And it, it's, it's not too shaky. Uh, I think it's, uh, well, I think it's still okay. Um, well, I really like this space duel uh, this is not wobbling or flickering uh, at all anymore and um, this is a game you can really well play with two players uh, uh, I haven't uh, the other player must <laughs> uh, I've got a second joystick somewhere Where? Uh, I'm doing something wrong right now don't know what yet I, I think this is not 100% conf figured correct yet uh, uh, but I, I, I played the two player made be a mode before and this is really great with two joysticks uh, a space duo this is cool um, then there is also very impressive Lunar Lander uh, I think it's impressive this is now displaying in 50 Hertz um, I think what you see here is over 500 vectors. Uh, I, I counted it at one stage and uh, that Vectrex is at all capable of displaying all these tiny, tiny little vectors uh, in, in correct speed. I think that's... Uh, I, I didn't think it was possible, but anyway, it is. And I'm kind of proud of it. Well, Red Baron... Yeah, all, all these games now play in the correct uh, uh, speed. I said Red Baron is, I think, 62 hertz again. Lunar Lander is, I think, 42 hertz uh, game speed. Um, really uh, like Speed Freak. I have not yet configured it 100% correct, but uh, it's, it's displaying uh, also in uh, 50 hertz. And uh, it's really, it's nearly playable now. If I, at some stage, uh, implement the other input options so uh, to switch gears in higher gears than only the second level then it's probably even better uh, uh, well but uh, I ha uh, haven't done that yet it's, it's, it's very uh, ah, yeah, okay speed free um, is there anything else the uh, settings menu here has changed a little bit uh, I must say the settings menu is still running in not IRQ mode. You have new options here. Um, somewhere, somewhere. If you are in, in, IR, uh, in IRQ mode, then the pipeline is always switched on. So uh, actually this option is not needed anymore. Also the where is this, this pipeline mode, this buffer mode, pipeline type. This is also not needed anymore because uh, there is only one pipeline type. So it's it's uh, actually the IRQ pipeline type, if you want to call it that. Um, this doesn't do anything if you are in IRQ mode. Um, yeah, you can switch it on and off. 
um, but uh, this only changes settings out of this uh, settings menu. So I can switch it off, go out, now there is no I IRQ mode. If I go to the settings again and switch it on, now we are in IRQ mode. Uh, with this few vectors you do not really see a difference. Uh, but it's a it's an own complete set of drawing functions, so to say. So the, internally it's it's quite a difference. Here you can set the Vectrex Hertz. Uh, I can uh, slow it down. Now it's uh, 25 Hertz or so. I don't know if you can see it on the on the uh, uh, camera. Uh, but you also have the options uh, to uh, say in, in which speed the app, the, the, the application, the program running uh, is actually outputting. Uh, it's 50 Hertz here per default, but if I go there from example some of these emulators, asteroids, if I go to the settings menu, then you can see this one is running in 62 Hertz, the, the emulation speed that is. Uh, yeah, well, not much more changed. Uh, there are some obsolete settings and uh, the IRQ mode is new and the actual app speed. Um, and from the last time what changed, uh, I, I said delay after X sample and hold is not really needed or necessary or whatever. Uh, forget that, it is needed. This little bugger that was responsible for uh, several Vectrex not displaying uh, the vector lists okay. So um, there are Vectrexes, mine for example, where you can leave it to zero, then everything is a little bit faster. But other Vectrex, or normally if you, if you program a Vectrex program with a Vectrex, uh, then the delay uh, speed is internally always two cycles. This is just uh, the uh, the the time length of the instruction it's four cycles uh, a store to the via register uh, is four cycles and uh, the Pytrex can actually store uh, a value in two cycles so to have the correct speed as a normal vectex program we have to delay for extra two cycles uh, what you see now here these uh, flickerings and uh, incorrectnesses this is uh, due to the fact that we are now in the settings menu there uh, this is not so exact drawing then. If you go out, out of this menu, then everything is fine and uh, yeah, looks really good. Mm. I changed for all emulators the default values again. So if you start them, they should uh, look again okay or, or even better as before. Or I hope better than before. Actually, they should all display about 10 to 20% faster. Uh, and the game itself should always run at the correct speed. Um, yes, this is about all I wanted to show you and to congratulate myself that that this is working. Uh, I'm, well, absolutely fine, it's playing 50 hertz. Not always. And, and, Later, when there are many bugs on screen right now, uh, it, it's not displaying in 50 hertz anymore. But the game speed is 62 hertz. It's the correct game speed now. Um, yeah, that was all I was going to show you, all these emulators. And uh, so mentally, I'm now finished with the interface library I wanted to program for the Pytrax. Oh, what I'm going to do next is uh, I will look at some of the emulators. I will probably implement dip switches so you can configure them better and uh, look at the input modes and uh, yeah, overall we we'll try to make uh, the emulators more playable uh, and more fun to play actually. So that's all. I will probably release uh, another Compilation of uh, these images, this Patrick's images uh, for you to play tonight or at the latest tomorrow. I thank you for watching and have a good time. Bye.